Hi, my name is Bill Raymond. Today is May 10th, 2017, and Microsoft just announced the preview of the Azure Function Tools for Visual Studio. They're available for download now, but there's a little bit of work in getting it all set up. So I'm going to walk you through it and then even walk you through creating one and then two functions and show you how to use them. If you plan to install the Visual Studio Preview Edition on the same computer where you have Visual Studio, the general availability version, then I recommend that you update the GA version first. So I'm just running plain old vanilla Visual Studio 2017, and I do see that there's an update available here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that update and run the installation. I'm not going to bore you with all of the steps to do this. I just think that it's probably a good idea to do this before you install Preview 3 of Visual Studio 2017. So I'll go ahead and make all the updates and then we will come back after that. Before I install Visual Studio Preview, I do want to point out that I'm using a virtual machine. So I not only installed all my updates to the existing version of Visual Studio, but I shut down my computer and I created a snapshot of the virtual machine just in case there's a problem. Because earlier when I was recording this video, about three times the installer stopped working and I couldn't get it uninstalled. So beware, you're installing some beta code when you do this. You should also be aware that the Visual Studio Preview does work side by side with the general availability version and it does share some code. Technically, when you install this, you should not be installing everything. You'll just be installing a big part of Visual Studio Preview and then they'll both share the code. So what I'd suggest you do is select the version that you have for the GA version. So you don't, for example, download Enterprise just for your um, product to not work because you have a professional version of the GA version. Okay, so let's go ahead and download the professional. and run the app. Very often when you install this, you're going to, you're going to need to update the installer first, so we'll do that. Once the Visual Studio installer is available, then you can go ahead and choose the different workloads that you want to install. You will, for functions, you will at least have to select ASP.NET and Web Development or Azure Development. You can select others, but you need to pick one of these two in order to get the functions capability. I'm going to go ahead and pick some other workloads because I know I'll need them for other projects. Once you've selected everything you need, click the Install button. Once the installation is complete, you can go ahead and close this window. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is download the Azure Function Tools for Visual Studio 2017. These work with Preview 3 of Visual Studio 2017, but you don't actually get them without installing it first. So go ahead and download this file to your desktop and run the setup program. It's pretty straightforward. I'm not going to walk through it here. Once you have the preview installed and you also have the uh, Azure tools installed, you can go ahead and run Visual Studio Preview. Just a quick note, I go to the Start menu and I didn't see it here listed anywhere in the Start bar. It has only the Visual Studio installer and Visual Studio 2017. I really couldn't find the preview version, so I noticed that if I come to the Start menu and I just type Visual Studio, Notice that the Preview 2 app is here. Sometimes that didn't even show up, so I had to type the word Preview, and that shows up here uh, as a desktop app. So anyway, just in case you're worried about that, trying to find it, you might have to do a little searching for it in the Start menu. So when you run it the first time, it's going to set everything up for Visual Studio. I already ran it once, so you didn't see that screen, but 
Now you're up and running and you're using the preview version. And you can see up here at the top, it says preview. So they're making it really clear. And also look at the icon over here on the left. It has this sort of um, mock-up style icon to it. I went ahead and right clicked on the icon down in the start menu and I chose pin to taskbar so I can easily access it so I don't have any issues accessing it in the future. To create your new function, you're going to go to the file menu, choose new, and choose project. You can come here to cloud and choose Azure functions, or you can do what I do, which is to come to the search bar and just type function, and you'll see there is the Azure functions. Right now it looks like they're only available for C Sharp. I'm just going to choose function one, and I'll also create a Git repository and click OK. Once your project's set up, you actually do not have any functions in your application yet. What you've done is you've essentially created a placeholder for, a fu for your functions. Because what you're going to do here is you're going to create any number of functions and you can almost treat those like classes when you're creating helper, helper classes in your own app. So I'm going to go ahead and right click here and choose add new item. And you can see Azure function is right here at the top. And once again, if you can't find it, just type Azure in the search box and you should be able to find the function there. And I'll click add. As you can see, there's a number of ways that you can trigger this function. I'm going to choose HTTP trigger and click create. As you can see in this trigger, it's basically going to do the equivalent of a hello world example here. Uh, if you come down to the bottom of the code, it says, please pass a name onto the query string. And you see here the uh, value is name. So we'll go ahead and try this out. I'll go ahead and run this app for the first time. It's going to ask if we need to, if we want to install the Azure function CLI tools, the command line interface tools. If you do not have these installed, then your function will not run. So go ahead and download and install them now. Just so you know, the Azure CLI may require you to restart your computer. If you have any problems and you don't see this message at the bottom of the screen saying the debugger is listening and you don't have one of these HTTP lines, restart your computer and give it a shot again. Now, I'm going to go ahead and choose this line here and copy it. I just press the Enter key. Now I'll go into a browser and I'll go ahead and paste that line in and see what happens. It says, please pass a name onto the query string. So I'll go ahead and do that. Question mark, name equal Bill. And you can see it's responding with hello, Bill. So the function's working now. Now you might be wondering how we're going to do this if we have multiple functions. Well, what I'm going to do is exit here and create another function just so you can see how that works. I'll go add new item, choose the Azure function. It'll, call, it'll be called function two and add it. And this time I'm going to, instead of calling this blob trigger C sharp, oops, sorry. Instead of calling it HTTP trigger C sharp, I'm just going to put a two at the end and create. Now let's go ahead and run this app. The other Azure function CLI will run and you will get two URLs this time. Here's the first one we tested the first time. And now here's our second one. You can see it's labeled two. And we can just do the same exact thing. Just copy that, open up in a browser, and you get the same results. So you can have multiple functions, and as you create them, they're automatically going to show up as URLs. One other thing that I'm going to point out is that 
the URLs will tend to scroll up to the top here and you're going to have to go find them again. The reason for that is the Azure Function CLI is going to tell you all the things that are happening. So it's showing that, for example, I made a request, here's the authorization, it was anonymous, and then the status messages and all that good stuff. So along the way, this is going to give you informative information. So I'll just leave here. So that's it. Now you have all the tools you need to start creating functions using the Visual Studio Preview 3 and Azure Function Tools for Visual Studio. Thank you for watching this video. Please press the like button if this was a useful video for you, and please subscribe to our channel. It's really helpful for us if you're looking for more videos. Thank you.